Hey, this is Detronus. Today I'm sharing with you a build that I've been working on for a long time. Because I'm over on the console version, I had to do everything myself. Couldn't preload any uh, saved games. Uh, so I just beat the game on Blood and Wine New Game Plus on Death March at level 80 something. If I had to give this build a name, it'd probably be The Witcher Build. It sounds silly, but the reason for that name is because its playstyle is most similar to what a Witcher is. It's all about potions, decoctions, oils, toxicity, using nature to defeat nature, becoming a monster to defeat monsters. I've tried high level sign builds, bomb builds, nothing compares to a toxic melee build. So let's get into the items you need to use. All these items are best in slot for this build and I think for the entire game. So what's the best steel sword in the game? Well, it's the Bellhaven Blade. The goal here with any item is to get as much critical hit chance and critical hit damage as you can. This happens to have the same critical hit damage as a Grandmaster Ursine Steel Sword, but it also has 15% critical hit chance. What's the best silver sword? Well, that's the Erendite. The second best is the Geshefft. This sword is the reason why I can do so much damage against monsters. Well, partially. It works on a charge system. Every time you hit a monster and don't get hit yourself, you build a charge and you can have up to 10 and that increases the damage of your sword substantially. If you plan on using a rend or whirl build, you have to enchant this with severance. It's just so cool looking and it's very useful. You will hit and stagger enemies very far away from you. If you want to do a melee build in this game, you have to use the Manticore. It's the best, hands down. It has critical hit damage and toxicity. As I'll explain later, toxicity is very important for this build, as you're working off of Euphoria, a new mutagen in Blood and Wine. The best gauntlets in the game by far are the Nilfgaardian gauntlets. This is because they have 50% critical hit damage. The best pants you want to be wearing are the new moon trousers. This is because it has crit chance and critical hit damage. The best boots by far in Witcher 3 are the legendary Manticore boots. These give you critical hit damage and, again, that much needed toxicity which directly translates into sword damage. Now let's see how these items work with our build. This is my setup for a world build, obviously. First you want to take this and get this to level 5. The next skill that I threw on that you might not need is Undying. This uh, is just a red skill, it helps uh, make that attack power mutagen stronger. You could opt to replace this with just some strong attack moves if you want to use strong attacks along with your fast attacks. Next is Razor Focus. This makes it so when you enter combat, you instantly gain an adrenaline point. And you'll see why these adrenaline points are necessary later on. Next obvious choice, you want Muscle Memory. This mutation resolve is very nice as it helps provide you a safeguard if you get hit you don't lose adrenaline points anymore, which is very handy as we'll explain later on. And here's another obvious one, precise blows is a must as it increases your fast attack, critical hit chance, and damage. Now here's one of the foundational skills, killing spree. Once you kill one enemy in a given encounter, your critical hit chance goes up by 50% given your toxicity is above zero, and it will be. Next, another foundation is Hunter Instinct. When your adrenaline points are at 3, your critical hit damage against the targeted enemy type goes up by 100%. It's important to understand that the targeted enemy type is that of your oil. Whatever oil you have on your weapon, that's the enemy you'll get critical hit damage applied to when you have 3 adrenaline points. And the next skill helps us with this. This fixate up skill makes it so our blade oils never wear off. There is an oil for every enemy type in this game, even humans, and that would be the Hanged Man's Venom. Because our oils never wear off, you can apply Hanged Man's Venom to your steel weapon and never have to take it off. And it always is there. Every time you pull out your weapon, you'll see the buff in the upper left hand corner. So that means against humans, you'll always have 50% more attack power and 100% more critical hit damage when your adrenaline points are at 3. And this is one of the reasons I love this build so much. It's the Witcher build. You're using oils. You're learning about enemies. What types of enemies are these? I bet you didn't know that Neckers were Ogrids. This build forces you to know the lore of the game, to understand what types of enemies you're facing, and it rewards you with a substantial amount of damage. So back to the build, one of the most important mutations is the cat school techniques. 
This makes it so every light piece of armor you're wearing increases your fast attack damage, but also your critical hit damage. Now since there's only four pieces of gear we can equip at a time, we can use the levity rune on our manticore chest to make all of our items light armor to give us the full 100% critical hit damage. The next really good skill is Metabolic Control, which gives us 30 more toxicity, which allows us to use roughly one more potion. With the new mutagen, Euphoria, this gives us about 22% more sword damage. Now here, Crippling Strikes was kinda just a filler, so I can get the attack power bonus from a red mutagen. The bleed effect is nice for proccing the Ikimara decoction's heal. So let's summarize so far. Our items are all giving us critical hit damage through their innate stats and through the cat school technique bonus. We're also getting 100% critical hit damage when we have three adrenaline points and uh, a specific oil against that enemy applied to our weapon. And we can have that oil indefinitely. To make use of all this critical hit damage, we have an ability that makes it where we kill one enemy in a fight, we get 50% more crit chance for all the enemies thereafter. You can dominate some of the hardest enemies in the game on the hardest difficulty, like this Art Griffin for instance, easily. Now let's get to the four new slots that Blood and Wine gives us for unlocking all the new mutagen. A foundational mutation is Heightened Tolerance. This makes it so you don't degenerate health when your toxicity is over the threshold. In this build we are pushing our toxicity to the max. And here's a good time to explain Euphoria, which is the new mutagen in Blood and Wine, and the best one in the game. If you can see it right there in the middle, it says that each point of toxicity increases the damage dealt by swords by 0.75%. Now my maximum right now is 238.5%. And I can hit that maximum quite easily with the amount of toxicity I have. To push our toxicity and our sword damage even further, we have acquired tolerance. This makes it so every formula you know it increases your toxicity allowance. And here again, we have another reason why this is the Witcher build. It really makes you want to know and learn more formulae. Because if you do, you'll have more toxicity and more sword damage, and you can use cooler potions throughout the game. This next mutation called Tissue Transmutation makes it so every decoction we currently are using increases our vitality by a thousand. If you have this skill on, you should be sitting around 9 to 12,000 HP easily. Now our last mutation for this build is one of the most important ones, it's Synergy. This increases the bonus we get for placing those mutagens you see in the upper left and right and bottom left and bottom right by 50%. That's how I can get my attack power up to 60% when I have a mutagen in that socket. And you have seen in this montage earlier that I was also using strong attacks with Rind. That's because you can easily change this build into a Rind and Strong Attack build with a few slight changes. To put it simply, just swap out all the mutations that augment Fast Attack and Whirl and change that out for Rend and all the Strong Attack mutations. Instead of Crippling Strikes, I have Sunder Armor. Instead of Tissue Transmutation, I have Poison Blades, which of course is up to your discretion. Do you want to do more damage or do you want to have 3000 extra health? I find with the Echidna decoction and the Art Griffin decoction, I always have health with this build. Now let's talk about what potions and decoctions you want to use. You want to use the Superior Tani Oil. Again, realize the ultimate goal here with potions is to increase your toxicity, which increases your sword damage. This potion is a nice one to increase your toxicity, but also it gives you more stamina so you can use Rind and Whirl much more often. The next potion you want to use is the Marabur Forest. Not only does it give you adrenaline point gain, but if you use it inside of combat, you get a free adrenaline point, which is nice to get those three adrenaline points required to get that 100% critical hit damage bonus against the uh, type of monster your oil is targeted towards. Next, I have the Superior White Rafford's Decoction. You can place any potion you'd rather have here instead. Uh, again, this is just for the toxicity. Um, you could also have a Swallow here if you'd like. Now lastly, you want the Thunderbolt um, potion. This gives you 35% more attack power and 25 toxicity. Now here's where your decision comes in. You can either use three decoctions and uh, four potions, 
<laughs> or almost five if you're going into the fight uh, midway. Or you can use four decoctions and uh, one potion straight off and then stagger uh, several potions after that as your toxicity kind of goes down. My recommendation is to use three decoctions that you like the most and then four potions. The first decoction you always want to use is the Ikimar decoction. This gives you health based on the amount of damage you do. And you're doing a lot of damage in this build. Uh, you've seen me do up to 120,000, which is a bit of an overkill. But on average, you're doing 10,000 to 20,000 damage. You want this for your fast attack or your strong attack build. If you're going to do a rend or strong attack build, using the echidna decoction is a great choice. It's important to note that the Echidna decoction does not work with Whirl's stamina depletion. If you plan on using just strong attacks and not rend, use the Art Griffin decoction. This makes it so your strong attacks deplete your stamina and therefore give you health with the Echidna decoction. This combination is very strong for getting health back. Watch my health bar here. Go from zero almost to completely full and that's about 10,000 health in one swing. The Doppler decoction is quite nice too as it gives you more critical hit damage when you attack from behind. This helps you set up more powerful rend attacks for instance. Now two final ones are the Wyvern decoction which gives you 1% attack power every time you hit until you take damage or the fight ends. Or the Water Hag decoction which gives you 50% more damage as long as you have full vitality. But I wouldn't really recommend this one as it seems like it's bugged. Um, it never seems like my damage increases from it. Well, that's it. If this video has been helpful or entertaining, please hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to get to them the best I can. Enjoy, friends.